I'm Donald Moffat. And I'm Heather Menzies. Logan's Run will not be on tonight. But stay tuned for the Charlie Brown special and the Fat Albert Halloween special. And we'll be back next Monday night. Coming February 21st, it's Faye and the Moon, the latest graphic novel from Franco and the Saturn Sisters. Faye, mourning for her missing mother, sits night after night below the moon that her mother loved dearly. One night she discovers she can pluck the moon out of the star-filled sky. Back safe in her house, she holds it close, feeling comfort at last. Then Faye loses the moon and finds that taking it has awakened ancient monsters, rats, dragons, and more who hunt for it for themselves. Will Faye be able to reclaim the moon, find her own inner strength, and save the world from eternal darkness? Faye and the Moon comes from the minds of Franco, whose works include Tiny Titans, Superman of Smallville, Archimaniacs, Itty Bitty Hellboy, and The Ghost and the Owl, and art from the Saturn Sisters, whose animated works include Sesame Studios' The New Neighbors, Hulu's The Awesomes by Seth Meyers, and PBS's Mira, Selkie from the Sea. Pre-order Faye and the Moon now, available in bookstores and comic shops everywhere, February 21st. Uh, this Superman portrait is really a send-up of the original Fleischer cartoon intro where you saw a quick explanation of the destruction of Krypton, the rocket ship coming to Earth, and the pose of Superman with fists on hips where he's kind of looking down a little bit. This is an exaggeration of that where I'm getting my traditional kind of Alex Ross low angle looking up the body kind of shot, which again I'll credit to Neil Adams as an influence. Um, this is really just connecting with the most fundamental kind of influence in my life from uh, that cartoon shaping the way that I illustrate Superman. It also connects in ways I'd never even thought about when I was doing the piece with one of the most famous images that Steve Rude did in World's Finest of Superman where he kind of recreated that Fleischer moment with his painted figure of Superman and then I would spend the rest of my career pretty much doing what he did before me. Good evening, everybody. It's time again for an Aya oh yeah, Trek watch. We're going to be discussing uh, Picard uh, season three, episode two. John here, Franco here, Wayne here, Mitch here. Um, I, guys, I got to say, I, I still love the show. I'm still enjoying it, but I have to get one major nitpick out of the way. And that is we went from here to about here as far as uh, plot moving forward. And I, I kind of resented that given that we've got 10 hours and um I, I was saying this to Franco, and I don't know if you guys feel this way. It's like CBS gives them a 10-hour order, a 10-episode order, and then they write to fit those 10 episodes versus what I've heard from other streamers and producers who have told me, we were going to do eight episodes, but, you know, we figured we needed one more, so we added an episode. I just feel like these guys still have issues with pacing their story to give us enough to eat and, and feed on for each episode your thoughts your hand moved slightly so there was, was, was an, it went it went, it went from sure. remember how when the dvds would come out from marvel and you'd have yeah. spider-man then you'd have spider-man 1.5 this felt like 1.5 rather than episode two yeah yeah i agree yeah but, yeah it, it's not moving at all yeah no no it's so like we moved from the elios ship to the titan getting everybody there Raffi's story moved a little bit further. We'll get into obviously Worf and seeing Worf, and that's great. But other than yes, he's my son. Glad, glad we know now. Yeah, glad that, that is coming. A positive. And there were moments in the show that I am happy to expound on that I really, really loved. Mm. It's just I wish the story were furthered a little bit more. I sent you guys that 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 meme of uh, Shatner, um, uh, James Kirk on 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 Genesis or on the moon when, when, when Genesis and it's like, you know, Oh, he's my son and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. I feel like I've, I've seen this before. Where have I seen this before? Oh yeah, that's right. The, yeah. the Picard episode I just watched. That's right. 
it's feel- well, they've been doing that in general. I mean, the nods to Star Trek two and Generations in particular are blatant. It's still good. I still think it's possible he's not his son. I think he's a clone of something. Stop. I no, I hear what Wayne is saying. The, um, the, the DNA. Uh, there's the DNA strand. Like if we're taking each of those little Easter eggs that they put at the end credits. Yeah. Uh, do not seek. Do not blame. That led into this episode. I'm t- the DNA strand still tells me cloning involved. Wow. I agree with the friend who says two of episodes of season three is still better than seasons one and two. Let me add that. He is Go correct. Ahead, no, I was going to say, and then Riker starts going, what about the age? He started doing the, the number of the math in his head. I go, hey, I was doing that last week, too. But it's like, all right. And I talked to a friend of mine, his big Trek guy. He goes, how old's Picard? I said, he's supposed to be in his 90s. And I said, wasn't Beverly Crusher around his age because they were all friends? He goes, yeah. He goes, so let's see. She's, say, late 80s. So if she had a kid, I go, ah, oh, it's all. It's all 24th century biology. They can right. have kids when they're 100. You don't know anymore. I mean, right. Dr. Well, even, was even back then, I thought. 137, man. He was walking around 137 years old. You don't know. Even back then, I thought that there was an age gap between them, and that's kind of why uh, the flirtation uh, didn't work. No, I didn't think like there that. was an age gap because him no. and uh, Jack Crusher yeah. were together in right. the Academy. And, yeah. in the, and all three of them, I believe, were together on the Stargazer. Yeah. So. And, or if Beverly wasn't there, again, they were friends enough that his feelings. I mean, he obviously knew Beverly yeah. well enough that it made him uncomfortable having these feelings with Beverly while Jack Sr. was, you know, with her. But, so. but as my friend brought up when I was telling him about the show, because he doesn't watch New Track, he stopped after the shows went off. He refuses to watch. But he goes, oh, well, Picard and Beverly were married. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, in the last episode, what is it? All things come to an end with you know the final track. Oh, he scene. goes when they yeah. flash forward. There was a brief scene where Crusher's in charge of a medical ship. I said, ah, she was. She was the captain of a medical ship. And yeah. he says they mentioned that they had been married briefly. I go, okay, I do remember that. You yeah. are correct. So there is some story there, but I do believe that's an all new timeline now that we're in, and that that old one where Riker had the old Enterprise with the three nacelles and. I think that's all gone. That doesn't. Yeah, exist. it's an alternate history. Absolutely. Yeah, he but, was alive in there. He was a in Oxford. Yeah. But it establishes, yeah, that the possibility was there. Further in the Star Trek novels, they did get married, and in fact, wow. I, the next time I have Michael Jan Friedman on, I think he uh, wrote the first story that shows the marriage. They had a son, and ironically named Rene after Picard's nephew that died, oh. uh, and. Uh, I man, everybody, and you don't need to read the other um, books, but if you read that coda, the last three pocket books, it's this three novel story, and it's Crisis on Infinite Star Treks in the best yeah. way, and it's it's so good. And Wesley comes back, and he's mentoring his younger brother, and uh, no, it's really, really, and it and it hits it hits Deep Space Nine characters very hard. Uh, I don't. Think and I well it does um, it does have a few Voyager characters in it as well. It is such an epic story uh, that of course we'll never get on film. It's oh. amazing. So yeah, I, because um, nobody thought that uh, they were going to come back with a new series post uh, Star Trek Nemesis. So the books kind of had their own continuity. And thankfully, yeah. Pocket rather than just abandoning them, gave the authors a chance to wrap up their storyline in these three novels. Fantastic stuff. I can't recommend it enough. I know I've talked about it before. So, um, but also, all right, let's see. I, I saw a couple questions here. Um, I, I do think that Ed uh, Sperling, who plays, uh, you know, uh, Jack, uh, is a good character and also uh, appropriately young enough. I thought he was older mm-hmm. when we saw him in just stills, but I, I but he looks to be like, you know, a 20 something. So that's cool. Um, I like him. I like him a lot. Does anyone else like uh, the Shaw Captain guy too better than than any yeah. of the other, uh, uh, you know, Michael Burnham or, <laughs> yeah, or anybody no, else? Cool. Yeah, I think he's so wishy washy and waffly uh, in this episode, but I still love him better. <laughs> but well, he's uh, he's weighing he's weighing yeah. what he needs to do, what he, he wants to protect his crew. He mm-hmm. does, even though he kind of resents Riker and Picard just waltzing in and ordering him and stuff. He sees the obligation. I mean, I get what. 
uh, Seven was saying to him. And and honestly, I don't think he needed, hey, if you save them, you save heroes. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he's about that. I just think he's a by the book Starfleet captain. That's how he got to where he was. There's also, again, referencing what we saw and also something that Vatic says to him, but referencing what we saw as far as the computer readouts on the uh, closing credits, something happened to him in his past that was a problem. And maybe that problem has forced him to be a by the book captain. But it was great when he shows up and cuts the tractor beam on the Elio. Yeah. That was a great scene. The best was, although, and I'm glad Langley pointed it out as well, that it was kind of stupid when they show a, a Vatic grabbing the Elios with the tractor beam and flinging it at the Titan. Yeah, Fantastic yeah, yeah. action scene. Yeah. But then yeah. what just happened? They threw the ship. Yeah, yeah, we I know. Didn't think, I didn't think it worked that way. But uh yeah, that was another homage because that's when the Enterprise showed up to save the Defiant. Remember in uh was it first contact? They were getting yeah. attacked and they go, oh it's the Enterprise and he cuts right through and separates the beam before the Defiant was going to get whacked. So I was like, oh another callback there. But uh, did you notice, uh, you jump ahead there, the, the Ferengi guy, Sneed? Loved him. Did Loved you see him. the baseball in his office? I did yeah. not. That's was fantastic. That supposed to be, I was like, is that Cisco's ball? Did he steal they, Cisco's baseball? I was hoping Quark would show up yeah. at some point in the season, and maybe he still will, because uh, I, I, I sense somebody from Deep Space Nine is coming. I really hope it's O'Brien, but I'd be fine if it was Quark. O'Brien's in a movie that. right now. He's I'm in sorry? that new uh, O'Brien. Uh, Tom Meany's in the new uh, Marlowe movie with Liam Neeson. I haven't seen. Oh, him that's cool. Yeah, oh, that's I thought great. he retired from acting, but I saw a clip. I go, oh, he's back. Ooh. That's great to hear. But yeah. they did shoot Picard at the right after they shot uh, season three. They shot oh, season okay. two rather. They okay. they immediately went into production for season three. So maybe there wasn't enough time for him to show up and do something prior to getting involved in the Philip Marlowe movie. I don't, I don't know. Going back to our conversation before, a by-the-book captain, you know, they don't get TV shows. No. Picard, Picard does. Shatner does. You know, Shaw doesn't. So, you know, I just it want to... It's true. Yeah. It's true. No, you're absolutely right about that. By-the-book captains aren't you, you interesting. You can emphasize the by-the-book captain because he goes, look, I've had 36 missions, yeah. complete missions, no problems. So, obviously, I think it's the USS Constance that he was on. Could be. Uh, also, um, regarding the uh, flinging uh, the uh, the Elios at um, the Titan, uh, Ephraim is correct. He, um, Robert Meyer Burnett, um, when he was making the fan film for Axanar, he had a scene where a starship uh, with its phasers clipped off a Romulan, or rather a Klingon warp nacelle, grabbed it with its tractor beam, and threw it at another Klingon nice. ship. And again, that's zeitgeist. Even Rob's like, they didn't steal from me. That's yeah. a good idea that I had and they had. It's all good. And I agree with that. Uh, Langley says that the baseball that Sneed had, uh, they said it wasn't Cisco's, but Sneed has Quark as a contact in his file. Oh, didn't see that. You know who that guy was that played Sneed? Uh, Terry Metalis worked on a show called 12 Monkeys. The actor who starred in that for all four seasons played Sneed, the Ferengi, but I remember more as the uh, Pyro guy from X-Men 2. That's the same oh, guy. Wow. Yeah, the, the kid that had the fire that kept doing that. A little flame shoot out. He, he, had, that, he had that tattoo on his head. Um, sure. Sneed, sure. which I thought was kind of cool. I like to talk about a barcode. That's that's That was a barcode <laughs> tattoo. One, one of my favorite critical Star Trek watchers is this guy, Nitpicking Nerd. And he said that when he saw the Fennus Ranger that was hassling uh, Jack in the flashback scene from two weeks prior, mm -hmm. he thought he was suffering from whatever the medical condition was where Jack was trying to get medical supplies. It looked to like that. he had something. Oh. I took that scar, though, as a battle scar because it, he had that Mr. Potato kind of lower face thing going on, on near, his, near the bottom of his face. But then he also had a big, uh, like, phaser scar or some sort of wound on the top of his head. So I took them all to be battle scars. I did not take him to be he, he's like well if he was you know suffering from the same disease why would he try and stop jack from doing what he did no i like the, i like the doctors without borders vibe mm -hmm. we're getting mm -hmm. from what jack and beverly were doing and now that beverly is revived i'm sure we'll hear more that romulan i was gonna say that romulan ale still like you know 
people could be bribed with that stuff after all these years. You know that when they open very up, very rare. I guess rare. it's like, oh, yeah, Ron but... Ale. It's the same yeah, but... bottle that they had on the, uh, the uh, McCoy gave Kirk. I'm like, look, it's the same shit, man. They're packaging it after all these years. Well, it's like, uh, is it at absinthe? Uh, absinthe, the, yeah, wormwood. You know, yeah. I mean, absinthe has been illegal for like a hundred years and stuff, man. So yeah. why not? Why not? It could be Romulan. It's like the absinthe of uh, of the Delta or the uh, the Alpha Quadrant. Well, you especially know? since Romulus blew up. That's true. Oh well, yeah, even more you know, to get. Yeah, yeah, man. You don't think on one of those refugee worlds, there uh, someone's got a Romulan still? Ha- like, Hawkeye, really? Romulan, Romulan Hawkeye. Hey, it this could be the Earth, thing. the special Earth. Yeah. They're selling, it, uh, they're selling it on the on eBay in in the in the century about <laughs> in the future. We're, we were <laughs> we were talking on the IS yes show last Friday, and it's like we need Jamie Farr in the Star Trek universe. Klinger, hey, Klinger. Captain, yeah. I got a great <laughs> idea. Nah, it's like so, Quaaludes were in Wolf of Wall Street. No one can get it anymore, so it's like a big deal. Yeah, like yeah. Cuban cigars. Yeah, it's exactly. like Cuban cigars. Absolutely, yeah, man. man. And Everybody yeah, my list says it's extra. It's extra rare now. So yeah, so are you really in love with the uh the other storyline going on with uh Raffi? Raffi, it's distracting. I'm it like, better, it better tie in. in. <laughs> it's like a commercial break. It's oh, like, you know, oh, come on, man, go back to the other story. I mean, I suppose it's gonna tie in at the end, but I'm you like, know, it's oh. gonna tie in, especially yeah. when the Wharf showed up. Yeah, and uh, and thank God Wharf showed up. I would have liked again a little bit more Wharf again in a, a, a slightly longer episode too. That's just me. Yeah. I will say I still dislike Raffi as a character. I don't like the way the actress plays her because yeah, she, yeah. she plays her so dramatically over the top. That said, I like the scene with her ex-husband. I thought that was interesting. I really like that Sneed forced her to shoot up. Yeah. And that was a great addict scene that happens in a lot of Donnie Brasco infiltrating yeah, exactly. the enemy kind of scenes where you got to do the drugs to prove that you're one of them and stuff. So from that standpoint, I liked it. But again, it's the passion, the emotion. It's like, Raffi, yeah. calm the fuck down. Maybe but, that's why Jay left you. Yeah. Too fucking and also, him. she's she's like a really shitty mom, too. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> this she's is twice now. Mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Twice but, that she left her family. But it's because she puts her career first. And also, her husband, Jay, um, he should have given her a little slack because, oh, you and your conspiracies, and this is the way it starts. Uh, much like we said, Shaw was right. Raffi was right. Yeah. Raffi's the one that's like, hey, the Romulans are behind this Mars thing, and nobody believed her, and that put her off the deep end and stuff. And it turns out she was right. Yeah. And 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 it's, I mean, really, again, I do think it was an interesting. I'm the last one that likes trauma drama, but I do like that Jay's like, uh, you want to reconnect with your son, or you want to help the Federation? Your choice. That was harsh, and I think a little unrealistic, but I have to admit I was entertained by it. I actually thought it was uh, Vulcan Legolas that showed up at first before I realized it was Worf when they played the Klingon music. I go, hey, didn't that guy die already from the last season, I guess? Oh, no, it's Worf. Oh, holy crap. Didn't and no, realize- they, they, did, they, they brought him back. He was at uh, yeah. Guinan's bar in the last episode because they oh. the timeline. Yeah, so where did he go after that? Didn't they send uh, you know where he went to another TV show because his contract was up and CBS. Oh, all right. Get the fuck was, out! You was... are not interesting. Goodbye. <laughs> That's hey, they, they did reference Captain. Uh, well, that was that the week before. They did say he was in his uh, positronic it, body. He's going to turn I, out to be Raffi's yeah. other son. Wayne, yeah. I look forward to you going to uh, creation conventions and seeing <laughs> Romulan Legolas and see what kind of line he's got for, for pictures <laughs> and stuff because. <laughs> Honestly, no disrespect to that actor, but he really got fucked. Yeah, he got he fucked did. in the first season, and he got fucked in the second season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, they so he's currently in a video game called The Quarry. Oh, well, he's working. That's good. Yeah, that's and good. that's yeah. that. That's the the last the thing he's done a- after uh, Picard. Because nope, you never know, nope. he's Australian, and you know he might do Australian TV or a movie, just another, like a lot of the Canadian actors do. Canadian product. Go ahead, Mitch. I'm another sorry. Easter egg, buddy. If you caught it, if you've been paying attention, the name of Doctor Crusher's spaceship—I can't think—it begins with an M. Was the same name as Crystal Ball's girlfriend's uh, medical clinic. 
So I oh, guess wow. they're trying to tell. Yeah, it was like I saw it on one of those shows, like eighty things you didn't. I'm like, wait, they're trying to tie that in. So it was like Maricampa or Marico. I can't think. How about they, they said it a couple times? I, I'm th- like, oh. I think that's just kind of like an off thing. They're not going to do anything. with No, it. they started the show no. off with. It. I'm like, there's a reason why they keep saying that Mariposa. That's it. Because I was thinking of a Robert B. Parker book, and I'm like, why do they keep talking about this Robert Parker novel? I'm like, oh wait a minute, that was the name of the clinic that she worked in. There. Wow, talk about really. You know, going. I I around. didn't notice because it only it only flashes for half a second, yeah. but apparently the shuttle from the Titan that Picard and Riker take, yeah, it was called the Savick. Yep, I saw and it, it came right to the screen. screen. Yeah, they like emphasize it. it came right up on the front screen there. But again, it only flashed for a second. But like you said, I watched one of those. Here's a bunch of Easter eggs. Yeah, yeah. And at least again, little least, even though it came right at us full face on the screen, it wasn't like, hey, look. Yeah, here's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. here's a Romulan thing. Here's a here's a Klingon thing. I was so. like, oh, okay. They blew that up. Mm. But um, but yeah, I mean, that's what we did get to move the story forward. I liked a lot. I just felt like we didn't get enough of it. No. Nah. But again, and I'm really interested because uh, everyone who has seen either the first six episodes or all ten are like, wait till you see episode four. That's the oh shit moment. And we've got one more episode before we get to that when we when we're there this Thursday, uh, with episode three. So you're, so you're saying the episode three is not going to move much forward? I'm yeah, worried. Gonna, hey, well, if, three, yeah, then, it's, it's going to go this high. I do <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just about a half an inch further. No, I do think obviously Beverly awake. Why didn't you tell us about our son? That'll oh. chew up some time. Worf and, and Rafi now together. That'll chew up some time. But Beverly could say, um, "Well, you were there. You know, <laughs> you had some part in this." Yeah. Remember Did you that? like that acting at the end when she came out the uh, turbo lift and he just looks at her in the eyes and looks in there? It's like, oh, they're that's not what I was speaking. gonna say. She had she had a lot of dialogue in this. Her her yeah. dialogue consisted of yeah, she just <laughs> well, maybe captured her voice and everything, yeah. Frank. A little a little tear <laughs> coming well, down the side. I liked it. It didn't hit yeah. me emotionally, and I'll tell you why. I uh, when Rise of Skywalker or no. When The Force Awakens came out, I was asked to do a first day review on WGN Radio. Uh-huh. And it re- this scene between Picard and Beverly reminded me of the no dialogue moment from Force Awakens between Han and Leia. And I got to say, I felt, and maybe because there was music behind it, but I really felt it was a stronger no dialogue, but tons of subtext moment. And this was fine. But I don't think it, it – for me, it didn't reach that level. I know a lot of people will disagree with me. Totally fine. But it just – it need it, it, that's where you really need the score. And I would yeah, have to really I think, watch two, I think those are two different things because the, the Picard-Beverly um, um, relationship has gone, you know, back and forth, in and out. Like he's, he's seen other people. She's been with, with others. And she left the ship for a while. She came back. It wasn't a consistent kind of relationship. So that – I don't know. It didn't no. do it for me either. Yeah, okay. Because honestly, yeah, I just felt like with Leia and Han, it was like, we fucked up. Yeah. We should be together, but I know why we're not. And that was what I was gushing about back when Force Awakens came out and said, these two amazing actors said nothing and didn't need to because it was all in their eyes. And it was there. And again, maybe because Beverly, poor Beverly had the uh, work on her uh, eyes. And had an eye job. Or maybe uh, they were out in daylight and this was a real dark ship and you couldn't see much. It's like, is that Beverly? Of course, I can't see. Who's over there? Oh, with oh Picard, crap, that's with, mother of my child. With Picard's <laughs> cataracts, he couldn't see across the bridge. Exactly. <laughs> this is this is 1960s, 70s, Jack Lemon. Yeah. This is 1990s, Jack Lemon. Yeah, well, you know, I, uh, I'm i still the same guy. But uh, yeah. Beverly, is that you? you? <laughs> and also, God... Anytime Riker opens his mouth, I'm happy. Yeah. Are you not seeing this? Are you? Why are we talking about this? <laughs> because everyone in the audience is with me, and you're like, I don't know what the hell you're doing. I'm very old. Leave me alone. I yeah. hope he hasn't gotten old enough to do like the the leg swing over the chair when he yeah down. yeah I'm, he I'm, throws I'm, his back out when he does it. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> here's the I'm thing. gonna do that at terrific con. I'm gonna have the chair set up at the panel, and I'm gonna make sure I get a low chair so he has to swing his leg over the top. Just to get there. Hey, what'd you think of Amanda Plummer there? I'm funny you should mention that. I see that uh Langley says, I'm actually glad Vatic isn't obsessed with revenge against Picard. She wants Jack for some reason. Yeah. Um, a little too arch for my taste, I have to be, be honest. Yeah, she yeah. looks very 
slick. Like, I had to lick the like, card. She looks like a punk rock band from the 90s, like Sid Vicious. No, yeah. no, you know, she looks like the character that, oh, what's the guy that played Commissioner Gordon, uh, the English actor? Remember, he was in the fifth element and he had that weird hair. Oh, Gary Oldman. Yeah, Gary, Gary Oldman. Oldman. She looks like Gary Oldman from uh, the fifth element with that she crazy thing like, going on there. Yeah. The, spike, the spike didn't have enough uh, shellac in it to stay pointed. Yeah. And yeah. not falling over her forehead and that stuff. No, I'm looking for you know when you go to the, the the theme parks and it's in the middle of summer and they have those those spritzers that kind of like keep you warm. <laughs> I, I'm looking for those <laughs> on the bridge of her ship because she looks moist Mwah. all the time. Like, all right, it's out. Let me give you a little jam with your peanut butter. She was Honey Bunny in Pulp Fiction. Really, <laughs> really. Oh, that's Thank right. You. Yeah, she did have that Honey Bunny that. look. Yeah. And again, okay. I, no. I'm a massive Amanda Plummer fan. I love her in Pulp Fiction. I love her in she's also the sister in So I Married an Axe Murder. Really? But again, I mean I no, I've 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 enjoyed her performance. No. She's great. And again, way to go, chip off the old block with uh General uh, Chang, Christopher Plummer and everything. <laughs> but, you know, he was in the Let's flip the dogs of war. Yeah. If she spun in her chair and did that, I would be surprised. I'm like, hey, I, I like bet that's gonna be a moment. Hey, she's she... laughing and spinning in the chair. Yeah, yeah. I love Terry Metalis, but it's like, once again, on the nose. Right on the nose. She's related to, to the Klingon Kang. Could well, be. Watching her timeline. Who knows? Yeah, you know. It would be cool if she was. <laughs> uh, oh, that's fine. Our Langley says, I liked how much she didn't give a fuck. Yeah. She's totally channeling her dad. Um, yeah. She doesn't need to. She's a great actor on her own. I mean, that's the thing. Seriously, love Amanda Plummer. Was very excited when she was announced as being the antagonist. But that said, right now, a little too arch, little, yeah. little too evil. One of those shows called out the fact that like, if you're going to blow up your enemy because you want them to give you Jack Crusher, why would you give them a whole hour to plan on an attack against you? Like, blow, but Mitch, she doesn't want to. No, I know, but she's like, I need that guy back. I'll give you an hour. It's like, oh, okay. Well, wow. again, she has the fire firepower, so she has to threaten them. But by the same token, no, she, she wants them alive. And hey. also... Mitch, it was the length of the show. Oh, okay. So the, show, the show was an hour long, so that's the how... Suit the, has how to know. Know. Exactly. All I kept thinking is uh, Christopher Lloyd, I give you, what, two minutes for you and your brave crew. No, that, oh, yeah, you're right. That was that, but also, uh, again, uh, Khan as well. Uh, he gives... Yeah, him a that's right. Yeah. Oh, I have, I have given you no word to keep, Admiral. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I mean, again, it's like, eh, you're trying too hard, man. Just and and it's close. If she just pulled it back, once again, that inch of story that we got moved, if you would just take an inch back and take it down just a little bit more. I do like that she knows all of them. Yeah. And even if we got our robot met reference. Yeah. Your synthetic body and everything. Picard. So I guess that is general knowledge then. Or maybe she's just broken a Starfleet wreck. Well, no, I don't know who the hell knows that he's a robot. Something's going on because she's got inside info from, from the Federation. That's what's happening. Well. She has everyone's psychological profile. Yep. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, true. Well, and and Rob, without spoiling, described the whole season as a techno th uh, political thriller. So maybe there is somebody with, and again, oh, and there, we're back in season one of Starfleet again, of uh, Picard rather, where we had a uh, ensign, ensign, uh, or uh, commander, uh, whatever oh. it was. A pill? You mean a man? What's her name? The one, the 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 Romulan. I don't give a fuck. A Vulcan. <laughs> Oh, that's right. That one. One. Yeah, 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 the commander with wow. the potty mouth. Yeah. Oh. Mm. So, yeah, I don't know. I, no, so, no, no, no. Not potty mouth one. The okay. Asian woman that was uh, Daniel San's love interest in Karate Kid 2. Um, I forget her name. She's got a great alliterative uh, Japanese name. That Was uh, that actress? That, actress oh, that I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's, it's been almost 40 years. So, yeah. How, so, how's she so not on Cobra Kai like everybody else? That's oh, a she was. Oh, I'd love it yes. if Kumi Kumiko showed up. Hey, and once yeah. again, much like Beverly Crusher. Hey, Daniel son, uh, you left a, you left me a little something in Okinawa. I don't know how to break it to you. This is your about son. 14 years old, but sure, yeah. Well, didn't she show up? I yeah. thought she showed up in, she in did Cobra show Kai. Up. She, has yeah. she showed up? I don't in, remember. Yeah, no, I, remember. So, I am yeah, so because, behind. That's great that she did. Yeah, because they went over. Oh, she married yeah, another guy. The yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that came over that got, yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, did she marry the jerk, Sato's uh, nephew or whatever? Think so. so? No, 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 no. She was oh, hotted. Right. They'll be hung out. I remember he went to go no, visit they hung her. Out, but oh, they, she's not yeah. married. Yeah, she's, she's lovely, and I'm sure. Yeah, they made her look harsh in Picard. I'm sure she's still a very lovely woman. But, but yeah, if she's we're really, she's beautiful, 
Yeah, if we're extrapolating out, so how does she get all this information? And um, Brent Spiner's in this, right? Yeah. So does he, show, he shows up as lore? Right. Does he get all this information? Is that is that where it's know. coming from? I don't well, know. He's a robot. So there maybe is we'll... something with the holograms, and I don't remember if they said something directly oh. or not. But the the you know, so I believe that is how we will get both Moriarty and Lore. And also, mm. if you see in the closing credits, they have a whole readout about the hol the holodeck and that the safeties are off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Could it be before? Oh still no! Rolling around? I thought they I deactivated know. him somehow. Yeah, before, oh, was, before, no, oh, we before. Otherwise known as short short bus data. Yeah, thanks. yeah, yeah. Rain Man data. Yeah, yeah, but he would he would tick a box. Well, he was he was disassembled at the Daystrom Institute, and the no, right, they said that. Right. There is a, yeah. hold on. There is a Daystrom Institute tie because that's where this weapon has come from. Go ahead, Mitch. No, you you just mentioned it because remember the yeah. first season of Picard, they had the uh, since rebellion on Mars, yeah. and they said they deactivated and they showed him he was in a drawer, wasn't he? Right, right. Yeah. Oh okay. God, you think they're actually going to tie it all together, all three seasons? That'd be crazy at this maybe. point. Maybe that that tentacle thing will come back from the uh, wormhole. Well, at the honestly, end of Mitch, one. that's what I was wondering too. Yeah, is are they going to tie in the tentacle aliens, and maybe Vatic is working with them in yeah. some way? I don't really. I I. I'd rather it be its own story. We'll see what happens. Um, Matt makes the same point that I made last week, and that is the baddies matched, masked henchmen spoke in clicking sounds, similar to the subspace aliens who were abducted the Enterprise crew in the episode Schisms. Maybe it has something to do with them. I wondered the same thing. That's what I noticed in the first episode as well, that they were clicking like the Schism aliens. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Got eight more episodes. We'll see. Um. Langley says, I never understood the reasoning behind killing Data. They could have easily said Sung gave him a program that mimicked aging. Yeah, but I think, uh, honestly, Brent Spiner was tired. Yeah, that's what He's I heard. tired of the makeup. Yeah, that too, which yeah. is a pain in the ass. The gold so, skin. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, for, the, for the 30 seconds of Worf we got, I love it. I'm glad that everyone was worried about the trailers where I'm a pacifist. It's like, bullshit, it's Worf. He's got that giant batlith or whatever that new Klingon weapon is. It isn't a batlith per se on his back. I'm like, Worf yeah, still he took, he took heads off. That guy. Yeah. yeah. By the did. way, we are up to, I believe, our third beheadings uh, now in Star Trek because of the Picard shows, the, third, wow. the three seasons. And it's like, <sighs> well, Star Wars did it all the time, so they wanted to get in on it. Did Star Wars do beheadings? Oh, something? my God. They cut no, off oh, Django yeah. Fett's head. They cut off yeah. Kanduku's head. Yeah. Um, yeah, they started doing a lot oh, yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, things got crazy. Everybody's losing their head. Exactly. Darth Vader, little dream sequence. But uh, no, I'm looking forward to hearing Michael Dorn. I'm very, very happy that he agreed to do it, and I hope he's getting a shit ton of money for doing it. Um, and that's another reason why we don't have Romulan Legolas and Agonis. Although Agonis, because <laughs> they, they took all their paychecks and gave it well, to Michael. They Dorn. had to figure out how to pay for all of the regulars, the next gen regulars. Yeah. And yeah, I don't think he had room. And I, I mean, I would have been happy if R Rafi wasn't there. Did I already mention this? I found this interesting. I, another show that I watch, and I kind of agree with this point, wouldn't it have made more sense to switch Rafi's story and Seven's story and make Seven the intelligent yes. undercover agent and Rafi the first officer, given that she's been a first officer before, she was obviously back in good graces in Starfleet in season two. I don't I mind that Raffi's doing this stuff, and I don't mind that I, I, I am finding less plausibility in Seven being so high in yeah. Starfleet than I would if Raffi were a first officer. Because of that, make... yeah, that first season, uh, or was it second season? I can't remember. They blurred together, but Seven was that that um, renegade um, uh, person going going doing all this all this stuff. So I'm like, yeah, that that would make perfect sense. And it would Sorry. make sense for Rafi to be the first officer to be more loyal to Picard than Seven to being more loyal loyal yeah, to Picard. Because she worked with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I mean, I get that Seven obviously had a season and a half of adventures with Picard, and it's a little bit further down, and they likely maintained a friendship or whatever. Or, Dear Rafi, having a wonderful time at the vineyard. Where are how's you? Your, how's your how's, how's your kid? Oh, that's right. You haven't seen them. That's still right. smoking the dragon weed. Oh. Oh, I said Rafi, I meant seven. Dear oh. seven, how are you? 
<laughs> Are you still upset about Ichev getting his eye plucked out and killed? That's another stupid move. You could have recap. Hughes should still be alive. Ichev should still be alive. Way to go, morons. You fucked it up. You shit the bed. Man. I'm sorry. It gets me angry. Wow. Angry, angry, angry Johnny. Yeah. Let me tell you. That, Frank, be like looking me. at your background, I remember uh, going. I don't know if Wayne, if you ever did this when it was still around, uh, the Star Trek experience at the old Las Vegas Hilton, the Elvis uh, Hilton with the big statue in front of it. They had the Star Trek experience there. And the first iteration of the virtual reality ride and experience, it's the Enterprise D. And you're on the bridge for like, they, they hustle you through it. So you're not there for more than 10 or 15 seconds. I so was on the back of the line and literally shuffling my feet like Tim Conway in a Carol Burnett uh, thing so that I could stay on the bridge as long as possible. Cause it was so, it was full scale and you are on the enterprise D and it was amazing. Did they show you where the bathroom was on the bridge? They did not. No, they did Damn. not. But it was, it was huge. You yeah, know I mean, what? You they get the the blueprint. What's that? Uh, they did in the blueprints. If you're a nerd, oh, no, you remember, that, remember that book that came out years ago when we were yeah. kids that had the Star Trek blueprints yeah. and it had all the uh, diagrams of the ships. Apparently, the bathroom on the old constellation, the one from the original show, was right off to the left of the view screen. And I'm thinking, you know, that must be embarrassing if you had like some bad gah for lunch and you blow and you blow up the bathroom <laughs> and then you come walking out. And, Air freshener. You're hoping that you know oh, no one. Gets well, you spot. know, you, you oh. ever you ever ride those old time trains in Europe and like yeah, you go to the you go to the bathroom and you lift up the toilet to go to the bathroom and there's a, a hole. hole and you can see you can see the the, the tracks. tracks. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm thinking it's the same thing on the spaceship. That thing just gets flushed out at <laughs> the space. You know? It is like hey, there's some poop on the windshield. Yeah, I've, I've asked you many times. Don't eat plumic soup right <laughs> exactly. before uh, uh, a duty shift. You know, stay near your quarters. That was the first oh my. Well, that, that first time Sulu said oh my. The guys oh on my. the night shift are blowing up the toilet right before the day shift guys come oh, out they... just to mess with them. Check off in his board. Oh, they didn't flush. They get it. <laughs> oh my god. Who didn't flush? Here we go. Oh, stand by, Wayne. That's oh, a great picture. Go. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's in the captain's chair. Yeah. She oh, is. yeah. Hey, I like her uh, fuzzy uh, jacket. Where, where was that taken? That yeah. was at the uh, Star Trek convention. Oh, wow. and in Vegas? Yeah, in Vegas. And here's one showing the the whole bridge. Stand by. Oh, who's my. that? Sumo? Oh my! There he is. Oh, look. Yes. How come I mm. never was in the captain's mm. chair? Yeah, he I was. And I, Brad, were discussing yeah. the night at dinner. You got Sad. hearing problems, Mister. Sadly, yeah. today it marks the uh, the death uh, anniversary of Mister Spock himself. Leonard Nimoy passed away. Oh, Leonard day. Nimoy. And I, I'm oh, thinking it was what six years ago already, or five maybe. You know, COVID it screws. I up. was gonna say that COVID yeah. weird. It's like I don't. It could have been last yeah. Tuesday. I don't remember or three years but, ago. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I I'm glad I got to meet uh, Leonard Nimoy as uh, they call him. In uh, always wish in, I got to meet him. He was amazing, and I got to I I didn't get to meet Shatner. I know Wayne. Wayne has met them all. Wayne has all met right. all the survivors. How about uh, Jimmy Dewin, uh, Wayne? Have you met? Oh, Wayne? he was great. He was he was a really friendly guy. Uh, DeForest. Uh, yeah, I have met them all. Um, I wish I haven't met Shatner as many times. So mm. disillusioned. I understand. He like <laughs> talking about his food. He'll he's more interested in what he had for dinner last night than he is anything else. Shatner. You say, oh, or we'll if you're there. willing to invest money with him, oh. very interested with that. Oh, okay. Invest I understand. Money with him, how? Like you horses, give him money? Uh, horses, uh, film factory. projects. I love his uh, commentary on. Oh God, now I'm forgetting which movie it was. The Esperanto movie that he made in the '60s. It's it's in that language that invented ang language. Of the sixties. Oh, right? I remember seeing yeah. that. Um, oh, we did so. a we did a scene missing uh, podcast episode. Me, me, uh, um, Gabe Hardman, and uh, <laughs> and Ian uh, Brill. Very funny, and his and his commentary on that is fantastic. You know what I was thinking at the time was, and they're all like, "Yeah, bullshit." He doesn't remember. No, he doesn't know. He doesn't remember. So I um no, it's awesome. Oh. Uh, Stuart says, I didn't meet Nimoy personally, but I went to a lecture he did at my grad school. Oh, there you go. Very cool. Very cool. I remember he there was a, 
Leonard Nimoy was at a science fiction convention in New Haven, and L. McPherson was at the Macy's across the street doing photos with people. And I stood there and I go, do I go see Leonard Nimoy or do I get a picture with L. McPherson? I chose L. McPherson. Attaboy. Um, yeah, I, I zoomed in on my picture with me at Beverly that I took at Fan Expo last summer. But a lot of people saw the full picture. And even though it looks like my arm is around her, you can see that I am not touching her at all. And she very sweetly, I mean, she she positioned herself like it looked like we were hugging or whatever, or at least yeah. my arms around her. And I'm like, I know the temperature of the room. You're a very lovely woman. And I would love to say that I actually got to put my arm around Beverly Crusher, but I'm going to respect the distance. I That's the um, uh, Keanu Reeves uh, trick where he will take pictures with women. Oh, yeah, he doesn't and, touch her. Yeah, 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 you don't touch, but it, like, it looks like your arm's around her and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know. I can appreciate that. Stuart says, I had an insane 10 minutes with William Shatner when he did a surprise <laughs> signing after a lecture he did at the con. Um, yeah, the closest I got was they did, in announcing Discovery, and it was the 50th anniversary of the debut of Star Trek. It was 2016, so, you know, 66. It was Shatner, Jerry Ryan, uh, Brian Fuller, who was going to be the showrunner of Discovery, um, Shatner, Jerry Ryan, um, Michael Dorn, Brent Spiner, and um, Scott Bakula representing all the shows. And it was great. And they it was a private press-only uh, panel, and there were only 100 of us in the room, and it was fantastic. And everybody had great stories. It was amazing. But I didn't get to speak to Shatner directly. I did get to speak to George Takei directly, and I did get to speak to Leonard Nimoy directly. And those were great moments for me. Yep. Yay. Yep. Yay. Um, what else about the episode? Um, yeah, I mean, oh, and also again, much like Star Trek Two, we're going in the nebula, and I wonder how many. I, I, uh, my suspicion is, on the Titan, we're going to spend the entire episode three in the nebula. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm yeah. waiting for it. the Z access to be mentioned, like they did in Star Trek Two. Remember, Spock talks to Kirk, saying Khan only knows things in two dimensions. Oh, okay. And then they go to the Z access. Right, and the Enterprise goes up and goes down, yeah, and then gets behind the Reliant. Yeah. Well, but, based on the firepower that we saw the Titan do yeah. to the Shrike, I don't know if it would be as damaging. No. Oh no, no, you'd have to get behind it. But well, even then, I'm every not missile. sure that I'm not sure that the Titan has the firepower to match the Shrike at all. Well, oh no, no, you... it doesn't have the firepower. But I, it'd be interesting to see if they do like the. A little nod to Star Trek Two with the battle inside the nebula. No, I was going to say they mentioned the entire armory that thing has. It's like, oh, it's got this, it's got that. I go, yeah. we get it. It's bigger than you. We get it. It threw a spaceship at you. We get you're outclassed and out. You know, you're never going to win. A well, but they, they have to. They feel the need to overexplain again. We saw it in the yeah. first episode where it's an encrypted code. Well, that means blah blah blah. Yeah, we know. We know. Yeah. Right. I, I really think they, they do that for, for new new Trek people. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I always wonder how many new people are jumping on board these shows at this point. Well, I hear you, but I also think the fact that they made such a big deal about... I, I do think whether they may, may not be new Trek people, they might be people that were turned off from Discovery, heard bad mm -hmm. things about Picard, and hadn't jumped on Paramount+. Plus. Right. But now, but have been watching the reruns as they're on over the air TV six nights a week, six nights a week, and then maybe enough of those people are jumping in. We're never going to know the real numbers. No. All I can say is, I hope that they are paying attention, and and also the feedback, and that maybe this is the direction we should go into, rather than I don't know when Discovery is going to wind down or not. I hope it's this final I season but not to continue in that direction and go the route of Strange New Worlds, but even more so Picard in terms of the way they're writing this and making a more familiar Star Trek. Here's a weird question for you. Do you think they'd ever syndicate or put these old, uh, like, Discovery out there? You know how Star Trek became the phenomenon once it got into reruns and we sure. all watched it as kids and stuff like that? I know you got to have Paramount Plus and they want you to subscribe to it, just like Disney does with The Mandalorian and all that, but... If you're losing money on stuff and you know there's a way to package this crap up and sell it out to like your local WGN or WPIX in New York or something like that, do you think somewhere down the road Paramount Bean Counters are going to go, hey, 
we got to get money back on this crap. I mean, just put it I in do. syndication. Yeah. I do. I don't remember what streaming show is finally making it to over the air where they're bringing it back and and showing it. It's not it's not a Star Wars or Star Trek thing. Right. Two things. One, I don't know what local TV how they feel from a, a city to city point about syndicate hour long dramatized yeah. syndication because there's two things there's the serialization of newer television shows and that flies against because in syndication they're always like don't give us two parters we may not show these in in the the, the proper order yeah we need to be able to have standalone episodes that said you see that dis- even picard they all have commercial breaks where they have yep. blackouts so they're built that way and i unlike the american market there's still the foreign market uh-huh. so paraguay might want to run reruns of discovery or some of the newer trek shows well no so- it's like it's like the what's the costner show uh, yellowstone that thing is on paramount plus it's on uh, Peacock for some reason. You can get it there for free because Peacock is a free thing. You, you if you have, for. If but it's you not. It's not the new seasons. It's the no, but but it yeah. even shows up on my cable sometimes on like this Paramount channel, this regular Paramount channel that's on my cable, not Paramount Plus. And it's on right. it's on Pluto TV too on the Paramount right. network over right. there. Oh, okay. So yeah, so there are like other. And then the only thing I could think of, John, to say uh, is that TBS they'll show reruns of like. What's a charmed and uh, yeah. Smallville? I'll well, see those all, in the morning. That's all HBO well, that's, and TBS and Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. yes, that's and the that's the thing. They're all the same company, yeah. and Pluto is part of Paramount's uh, uh, properties as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, in fact, it was TNT this weekend that I saw a commercial for some old streamer. Right. That it's like, oh, it's going to be on TBT. Uh, TNT. Oh, Titans. That's probably what you're thinking of, right? No, Titans. it isn't Titans. Titans has been on there for a while. Yeah. It's oh, a newer okay. show. It's a newer show. Oh, interesting. No, so yeah, just... as as Langley says, no, they they uh, they they already license out the stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I just wanted to check. Yellowstone is on Amazon Prime up here in Canada. Oh, okay. Not but down they, here. Down here. I was I was going to say I went to Walmart and they actually had the the uh, I think season two of Picard might have been out, but they do oh, yeah. put those shows out on DVD and Blu-ray. Sure they Unlike, do. Oh, Disney doesn't do that on any of those shows, but Paramount right. does put all this other stuff out for well, people that don't subscribe. You know, yeah, I don't know what the balance sheet is at Disney because obviously they just fired seven thousand people. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that said, I know that Paramount certainly did not have the numbers that uh, Disney had, and so yeah, in fact, our friend uh, Skokie Spidey, Mike. Uh, granted seasons one and two of Picard, uh, be- on DVD. So, I-, I wonder if there's any extra deleted scenes and all that jazz, you know. Oh, I that's likely, and also, I would hope there's some fucking uh commentaries and, or maybe uh, the ready room. Strange New World is coming out in 4K next month, yeah, in, in April. I oh. saw that, yeah, yep. yep, that'd be cool, so, you know. Um, Mandalorian starting uh, later this week, and we'll we'll certainly start talking about that as well as uh, Pickard uh, in uh, subsequent episodes. Mm. Uh, still, still loving the arc. I think it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm all um, caught up, Johnny. On the arc, yeah, yeah, the arc, the Dean Devlin show that's on Sci Fi Channel. I think that's excellent. I just, I'm all caught up on back. the Last of Us too. So I just, I just yeah, I watched oh, that. The Last of Us yeah. is just sorry, guys. Yeah, I, phenomenal. I just, I, and I believe it. I just, I, I'm not. It's just too it, much it, to it, watch. It, it, it's not really uh, zombies. It's just, uh, it's the yeah. human interaction. It's yeah. the human relationships that are really good. Really but it's a well. downer. But it's a downer. I'm not well, yeah. Yeah. The road is a downer. Movie. Yeah. The road is really a downer. What, that old but, movie? Oh, yeah. God, yes. Oh, God, yeah. With uh, the guy that was from uh, Lord of the Rings. The... Uh, Viggo Morgison. Viggo Morrison, yeah, yeah. Uh, was... I did the the wrong thing. I actually saw it after Valerie passed away. It just went wow. Oh, do I'm not, sorry. do not, do not, do oh. not go see that movie if you're in a dark, dark, well, dark place. I can relate because I saw it Terms of Endearment in the '80s, right after my father died, and especially when Deborah Winger is sick and talking to her kids, it not only reminded me freshly about my father, but 15 years earlier when it was my mother. And it's like, yeah, I was a wreck. And thank God my girlfriend's like, oh, you're so sensitive. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, 
I'm like, no, nah, it's just hitting too close to home, man. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not made of I'm not made of steel. I'm a man. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, man. I I I need and again, just like that a new Star Trek, I need optimism. And 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 this is still early on, but I I again it's the fact that it's our familiar cast. We all want to know what these guys and women have been doing for the last 20 years. Um, oh. I really like Shaw. I think he's a really great character um, and a good counterbalance to the Enterprise crew. Um, I, As much as I was disappointed that the story didn't move further, I still have hope. The fact that the, the Federation goes in the shitter in the next thousand years, though, is kind of a downer. You know, it's well, like, well... But I like you know, it's funny. I was, as you know, I was talking to Mark Wade before we started this, yeah. And we were talking about the Legion of Superheroes and things that happen in the present suddenly make you have to retool the Legion, and it's far enough away in the future that you could really just do something different, and yeah. or it can end and you never go back to that thousand years in the future bullshit. Because I agree with you, Mitch. I hate yeah. the bar. I hate. I mean, I don't mind that the Vulcans and the Romulans got back together, but not to be one race and one planet. No, that's stupid. That's <laughs> stupid. And they eat poop. That's stupid. Shut too. up! I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they should have that guy travel back in time. The cap, the the the, with the president of the Federation, whatever the hell he is now, the dude that was in the Mummy movies. The just take his character out and put him on. Like he's a good character. Yeah, that's oh, what I'm saying. You know, Get, just, just pull the good characters from all these shows and make one are, new ship. There are rumors that they're going to make some sort of Mondo time travel crossover that's going to hit every iteration of Star Trek. Every iteration? What did I just tell you? I told you what How I know. How possible? How? Well, well, again, people are still alive, so it's possible. Yeah. Every? Will we ever see William Shatner play Captain Kirk again before he passes? I'm going to say no. Wait, wait! Every every iteration of Star Wars. Well, let me Star let me Wars. Say, yeah, yeah. Me, <laughs> well, what if you bring back Savick, which technically is part of the original cast era? Yeah. So yes, Mitch, it is possible. Yes. And also, the X come back after Savick. I don't think it's possible. I, I think it's think. possible. We we seen and it in Forrest Gump. You can do where, lots of things with digital. As as Mister Spock himself said, there are always possibilities. No. I want Jeffrey Hunter back. Let's go real old school. Dead. <laughs> oh, but you said anything's possible. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, we got Anson Mount. What are you that's... talking about? Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Oh, and we got and we have original series cast members and like got... Aurora and Chapel that and we've got a new a new Kirk, yeah. Oh, that's right. New Kirk. Like yeah. new Coke. Exactly. Nobody, yeah. liked, nobody liked it. <laughs> new, Kirk. new Kirk. I keep saying the guy who was in Hardcastle and McCormick. With Brian Keith, uh, the young guy, uh, to- oh. and he's in he's in um, Daniel something. He's in Insurrection, and he was one of the aliens in Insurrection. He could easily play middle aged Kirk because he mm. looks very Shatner like as an adult, as a, no. se- a senior citizen. He looks like Shatner. No, I don't agree with you. But I, I know, but he he wants too much money. I read those uh, Mark Altman, uh, Roger Ray's uh, books, the oral history books about. Uh, the, the whole of Star Trek when Enterprise was trying to get him on, he was asking for movie money. Oh no way! Harder. And they're like, "It's there's no way we can make that work with the budget." Well, then I'm not doing it. Yeah, because so, he was yeah. supposed to be that silhouetted figure that was in the uh, Time War thing, right, or whatever. Never happened. No, he was supposed to be the the plan was to have him be Tiberius um, from the Mirror Universe, oh. uh, the the evil Kirk. So thank you, uh, uh, Wayne. It's uh, Daniel Hugh Kelly. You can assume yeah, I, I Daniel you Hugh Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, yeah, I remember that dude. I, I, but, I'm just uh, respecting being quiet like Scoot. But uh, that's why you're just, the best. Just say you'll be right back and go to the bathroom. Exactly. Um, I gotta go. But with, no, with, anything, with but his age, go. and he's asking all this money. What what is he gonna do with it at this point? <laughs> Payback. Cocaine Bear 2. He's going to make the sequel to the Cocaine oh. Bear. Movie. By the way, guys, no interest at all in Cocaine Bear. Oh, that, no. oh the movie's great. I oh, one. I heard it's a family drama. It's all it about is. like... There's a yeah. family involved. Yeah. <laughs> Boo Boo and Yogi and... Hey, Yogi. Yeah. It's, a mom, it's a mom with a cubs. 
We're going to talk about that next week on the show. Cocaine Bear. Are you going to see watch it? Are you going to go see I'm going to go see LSD Ostrich next week. I hear that's going to be trippy. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like the 80s yeah. when uh, the Turtles came out and it was radioactive hamsters and all these other books. Yeah, yeah, radioactive black belt hamsters. Yeah! Don't forget yeah. the kangaroos. There was a kangaroo book, too. Stupid. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. Very stupid. Oh my Speaking God. of books, Franco's Speaking got a new book out there. You, oh, I really? Do. I thought there was a commercial for it at the beginning of the show. I was just going to say, I saw a commercial Speaking for it. Speaking of the yeah. beginning of the show, how come we never see the Fat Albert show? That, but that, that, no, that's that Halloween special they talk and about. You, I'm they, in front of being preempted, but I want to see the Fat Albert show. It never comes they, on. Have, uh, because of fat shaming, do we have to? And also Cosby's trouble. First of oh all, Cosby's God. trouble, we're never going to see Fat Albert again. Is and secondly, Albert anymore? fat shaming, yeah. Are you just going to be able to call him Albert? And yeah, the, that's the Albert show. But, the, bang, but, the, and but what about know, Weird Harold? What's that, Weird Harold now? Speech that, impediment Harold? Oh, Weird Harold. No, I was going to say you can't do Mushmouth because of his speech. Oh, Mushmouth. That was the guy. Hey, Albert, what you been doing yep. with that thing? I never yep. knew what that was on his head. Wasn't it like a... No, no, no. I'm a sorry. That was, uh, sir, that was dumb Donald who had the thing over his head. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah you're Mushmouth, all messed up. Mushmouth had, had, a, had a knit cap, and he just, hey, but man, but... I'm See, Mitch, this is why I don't believe anything you say about Star Trek, because you get everything wrong. Well, it's all messed up. I'm getting uh <laughs> what's that disease that Sarah had? It's all so mixed up. Here. I was just telling Trapper John the other day when we went to lunch with Radar, shit's been getting weird ever since Henry Blake died. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh Langley wants to know, and this is a good opportunity to uh, mention our C2E2 appearances that Franco and I will be having. Um well, I mean, every day he, uh, he wants to know uh, what days we'll all be going to see two E two. We'll be there all weekend, Langley. Don't yeah. worry, you'll see us. I'll be there, I'll be there every day too. Wayne, hey. will be there. Wayne will be in the building because he bought a ticket. You guys will be like outside waiting to get in. Hey, I will be there. I have a panel Friday, Sunday, something else happening, but yeah. I have, I have several panels on Friday and Saturday, and uh, just our IF oh, yeah, panel on Sunday. But yeah, uh, Langley, what you want to do is you want to go to Artist Martin Hell. Franco's uh, table. Are you guys in the final uh, row? Are you in like usually we're in the last row? The, the well, the first row, depending on which way you come in. But right, actually, as you yeah. walk in, it is the first row, yeah. uh, but it's the last letter of the alphabet you usually see. And uh, yeah, then they're right on at the end of a row. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you'll be able to find them very easily. And I'll be there. Oh, and I heard I heard from Mish that I have a new book out, so you can come get that too. It'd be uh, Fan of the Moon, everybody, that came out on the t February 21st. Uh, check your local yes. comic stores, but also uh, go on Amazon. It's I'll have copies of Amazon. that, and I'll have copies of Dead Man Tells the Spooky Tales and a bunch of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. I didn't know Langley was basketball tall. He says, I'll be the extra tall, six foot seven black nerd that looks lost as hell. Absolutely. <laughs> Finally, someone I'll be able to look up to. <laughs> That's true. Frank was tall, too. They could That's be on the Vulcan uh, Amok Time Pit. Da, 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 da. <laughs> All right, if nothing happens with the on wound, we'll move on to, I forget what the name of the other weapon was. Oh, oh, before we go, uh, uh -oh, Frank, uh -oh. it's going to be at booth Z09. I love yeah. the Canadian Z. Z That's Z like Z for us Americans. That's right. Because we're the, as I told a British woman once in San Diego, I'm afraid to do a podcast because I'm afraid my accent might be off putting. I'm like, ma'am. It's your language. We're the farmers that dumb down the English language. I'm farmers. like, please. I'm like, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Religious zealots, I like to think of us as. Yeah. Well, yeah, as, as I've told my... Oh, you know what's awesome? So I do. I was telling the guys off... I think I was telling the guys off the air. I did a trivia night at uh, this Lutheran church, and it, the category was science. And the question was, what is vulcanization? And my sister goes, isn't that Star Wars? Isn't that your thing? I go, first of all, it's Star Trek, Vulcans, not Star Wars. Secondly, it's science, not science fiction. <laughs> Shut up, dumbass. See, I'm even did you, did you answer the question what Vulcanism is? Yeah, it's rubber. It's rubberizing, uh, yeah. um, you know. Your penis. Put, put yeah, down your the penis. rubber. My, my <laughs> penis is I have that. I have that cold shaft. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Look at that. that. I have it as sound, well. It is just yelling at me all the time. It is, yeah. it is one of the best uh, Kickstarters I've ever backed. Yeah, there are tons of fantastic stories drawn and written by our favorite comic creators that are all through Koshak's life when he's a kid, years before he joins uh, the wire service that uh, the INS. 
Yes, Independent sir, news right. service. Out of Chicago, I might add. With Tony Vincenzo. Call. Call. <laughs> I love yeah. those shows. Oh, my God. <laughs> they had the uh, the <laughs> Moss Monster on Saturday on Me TV. And that's what that's a really that's a good one. That I, I no, that wasn't Richard Keel. He was the uh, Native American uh, yep. creature. Mm-hmm. The Moss Monster was good though, not as good as Terror in the Heights though, or Horror. In the Heights. The, I think that's the best episode. That's uh, Court. I think Phil, Phil Server. No, no. Oh, yeah, he was the waiter. No, no, no. It was. Uh, um, Damn it! I just met him last summer. Oh, and, uh, he was the voice of the turtles. You were talking about teenage yeah, turtles. It was, yeah. yeah, it was. Um, God damn it! What's his name? Corey Court Court Barry Court. Damn it! Barry Gordon. Barry Gordon. Barry Gordon. Gordon. That's what yeah, I said. Barry Gordon. Barry Gordon. Sure, yeah. Gordon. sure, yeah. That's what yeah, I meant. It's Barry, it's Barry Gordon. But yeah, and also Lily. Phil Silver yeah. says the uh, elderly Jewish the guy, rabbi. I believe. Yeah, that lives. Well, he wasn't the rabbi, but he he lived in the he oh. lived in the projects that were being uh, terrorized by the monster and everything. Yeah, yeah. the zombie was yeah. pretty cool. That episode. It's a good episode. Oh, and, uh, lips. How about yeah, the uh, how about the um the robot episode was pretty good. Oh, Mr. Ring. Yep. Very yeah. good. Very yeah, good. There's yeah, werewolf. That's the there's the werewolf on the uh the ship, uh, the cruise. I love the werewolf, yes, with Dick Godier. Yeah, that's right. They Dick got Godier. The, they got yeah. the defrock priest to bless the silver bullet. Yep. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. Defrock police is trying to get action on this cruise. It's like <laughs> Love Boat meets the Night Stalker. It's fantastic. I didn't know they had like those cruises out in the uh was it Lake Superior? It was like right over there, was it? I, I thought it was West Coast. I, I assume I didn't that's why I was like, where did he go on this cruise? Who sent him all the way on the love boat, man? Bahamas. The well Bahama, again, it was Mama. wire service, so they were doing feet, you know, they do features and stuff. All right, Kyle, let's get out of monsters. Let's have you do a cruise ship. One of the okay. best was the sequel to the uh vampire story when he yeah. goes to Los Angeles. Yes. and there's the female one, and yeah. my boy Red Brown is in that one. He's in the opening. He's the football player that gets and killed. And the Marsha, the waitress from Arnold's in the first couple of seasons of Happy Days. Oh, yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, an aspiring writer that wants to learn from Carl. With the curly oh. hair. Yes, she is. And then there was uh, Anthony Vincenzo's niece. Right. That he put, um, Myra? Myra? Something with an M. I don't remember. Her name. And she was like yeah. a women's liver. Yes. Uh, Artie's watching. Thank you, Artie. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, Artie. And then there's, of course, uh, Miss Emily, the lady who did the puzzles and <laughs> the love the, board. Yeah. In that horror in the heights, because it's mm-hmm. got to be somebody that you trust. Yes. That's the image that the monster shows. And the only one, yep. the only person that Carl trusts is Miss Emily. her. Yeah, he killed her with a crossbow. Uh, I'm scared. Please, yeah. don't Put fight. that away, Carl. Yeah. I had to turn off my video, guys, because you guys turned into nerds. So I think well, yeah. you want to know talking. if uh, I'm in SAG after I am, and if so, did I vote on the SAG awards? I did. Yeah, and uh, I voted for my I voted for my favorite stuff. I took a page from Robert Wool, where I'm like, I'm not going to vote for the favorites. I'm voting for. I did vote for um, Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm really happy she won. Short um, round. Yeah, short round. Of course, Michelle Yeoh. That's a great movie. That really is a great movie. Trippy, but it's a good movie. Um, on purpose, but that's great. And I, wow. that's what Hollywood needs is inventive movies. And isn't that awesome that they made inclusion with the idea of also making something interesting? And did you watch I, Babylon? Speaking of weird stuff, I haven't yet. I know it's yeah. on. Um, it's on Paramount Plus. Yeah, right, right. And I will get to it. Why is it yelling at us? Because I, I want you to watch the, the, the Babylon. See debauchery. And, Cocaine. I know, but you don't have to overmodulate, my man. Yeah, yeah, you're overmodulating, damn it. Because my mic's <laughs> exactly there. You go, but you don't have to. Much better, much yeah. better. See, now we can't hear you oh. at all. Golf whisper. I am mutant. <laughs> He's lining up the putt. On this is the tricky green on uh, 17. <laughs> Yeah, don't do uh, golf references on this should, show. No should one. We wrap. Are we good? Is there anything else? Uh... I, think, I think we're oh. done. Oh, oh, I, say, one thing we have to say. All right, stand by. Oh, yeah, like, Mary. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, hold for on. the first episode that they Annie. actually did it for Annie. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So shame. What a shame. And oh. I, yeah. hey, they, man, ded- they dedicated it to her, right? Yeah. 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 And I'm and I'm and I'm bummed as hell about Raquel Welch. However, the Raquel Welch news completely knocked Stella Stevens, who also died within a couple days of Raquel. And uh, yeah, I like the next day that. or something like that. Yeah, right? she yeah. didn't get the love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, you're bending my photos. That they, was did my they, what was the news? Did they clone Raquel Welsh? What was the big news? Just the past she passed on. 
Yes. Sheesh. Oh, all right. Really? There was more. I was like, something else happened? What happened? They saved Brock Hell's brain. <laughs> hit, hit that mute button on the mic again, yeah. will you? <laughs> I'm, I'm high as a kite on cold medicine right now. What? I feel oh like John God. does most days now. This is a new experience <laughs> for me. It's true. I'm it's not true. used to this contact high. You know, the little contact pill with the little things inside? I understand. This portion of word Time will release to you bubbles. by Revolution. Revolution. For medicinal purposes only. Thanks for coming out today, guys. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for hanging, everybody. Good job. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> it's our Trek Talk. It's like a TED Talk with Star Trek. But longer and it's wider. Calligraphy ink. Oh, nice. See, that looks like my weed weed bottle. Yeah, well, this is this is legal here. Is that what you do? Do you, do you huff uh, calligraphy ink? <laughs> I huff calligraphy ink, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, kids. The next time we'll talk uh, not only... Uh, the next episode of Picard, but we'll talk about the Mandalorian as well. Catch up hopefully on Quantum Leap. Wait, I gotta watch the Mandalorian now. Yes, oh, that's yeah. coming back this week. Baby Yoda. Yep. Uh, Love Baby Yoda. Yoda. Which I prefer calling him that instead of Guru or whatever the hell. Guru, guru, the guru. Great Kazoo, the Great Kazoo. No, that would be awesome. That'd be awesome if uh, Harry Harvey Corman shows up with a big hello. helmet. Hello, Dum Dums. Yeah, hello, hello. Harvey Corman. Come, come see me in Arizona this weekend at the Tucson Festival of Books. I'll be there this weekend. Come see me. Oh, point. Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, as I like yeah, to call indeed, it. Tucson. All right, everybody, thanks. Stay safe. Stay happy. <gasps> you looked like he was going to see. I was going to fall. I have a seizure coming. All right, stand by. <laughs>